Okay. Can you tell me the story about when you um, snatched the mic from Puffy during the rehearsal of a, I don't know if it was a war, reward, if it was an award show or if it was a tribute show, but, but can you go into that a little bit? Yeah, that show was for the MTV Awards where basically um, MTV wanted to do uh, a tribute concert during the, the, during the awards for a tribute show where um, Tretch had a, you know, he had a tribute that he did for Pac. So Tretch was going to sing a song for Pac. And Puffy and Faith Evans had a song that they did for Biggie. I was against it. You know, Steve Lobel, um, of course, he was trying to advance our career teaches that look you guys got to be more diplomatic you can't always say you beefing with this person and that person this is what's going to open up doors for you guys and the outlaws wanted to do it you know we went to we went to, we went out to new york big psych was there as well but i always been against it i said bro i don't want to be on stage with puffy pot dot not liking this dude and i just don't want to do it you know so they kept you know they was like nah we got to do it so we went to rehearsal and my intention was I'm gonna wait till it's a live show, and I'm gonna snatch the mic from Puffy, you know. But um, I was intoxicated. I didn't really know if it was a live show or, or, or rehearsal. I just seen bright lights, you know what I mean. And um, Puffy came next to me, and I just snatched the mic from him. He tried to grab the mic back. I pushed him. The security guard rushed me. The outlaws got in the middle, and they basically kicked us out. You know what I mean? And um, I remember that day, everybody being upset with me. Um, the outlaws. Run DMC was there, you know, they was kind of upset. Um, Shot Kim is a person, he's a, he's a man that's Queen Latifah. I grew up with Shot Kim. And he came to me and Shot Kim was like, Moo, why did you do that? Puffy want to talk to you. And they took me to some, like, some stairs, like behind the stairs. Big G came with me. But they didn't want anybody else to come with me. So I went in a small room and Puffy was there with all his homies, like like security. Like It was a small room, but he had a, at least four or five people with him. And just me and G went in there and Shaquem was there. And Puffy was like, why did you do that, Playboy? And I was like, man, you know why I did it, bro. Don't, 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 let's not go there. And he was like, this, I'm tired of this stuff. I'm moving to Europe and this and this and that. And nothing came out of it. We left the room, you know what I mean? And we was pretty much blackballed from that day on where... You, t you snatched the mic from Puffy, but for me, you know, I did what I had to do. I just didn't feel comfortable, you know, performing with Puff Daddy. You know, it probably would have been good for our careers. It probably would have opened up doors for us, but I just couldn't do it, you know? Okay. Um, can you tell me about in, in 1998, I think it was early 98, uh, what your reaction to was when you started to see all the songs um, hit the streets as far as the the Machiavelli bootlegs and um, all the music kind of starting to to flood out and get out into like the swap meets and you know uh, uh, eventually the internet. But what was your reaction when when all that started? That was crazy because it seemed like um, nobody knew where the music was coming from <laughs> or how did it got leaked. You know what I mean? I I remember that I was back in Jersey, back and forth going from LA to Jersey, and every Body at that particular time had the, some songs leaked from Machiavelli or some of the pot songs, and nobody knew where it was coming from. So it, it definitely it was weird, you know, where nobody could have put their fingers on it, who leaked it. It, it was crazy, you know. Okay. Um, can you tell me a little bit about? I know we talked about the the song that Tupac had written for you, the 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 interview of a problem child earlier, but he also did another. Uh, yes. Like he had also written another verse that you ended up. Uh, recording and he recorded it, but you, you know, used it on the retail version. Can you talk about "You Can Be Touched"? Yeah, "You Can Be Touched." Actually, Pac wrote that. He he actually wrote it and also recorded it himself. And um, one day he came to me and he was like, "Moo, this song, these lyrics sound like something you should be saying," because it started off saying that you know I didn't have my parents and. You know, like growing up in a struggle. So Pac was like, it just sounds like something you should be saying. You know what I mean? And um, he's like going there. And you know, back in the day, for a rapper to have someone else write their songs, it was kind of looked down on. You know what I mean? Even though it's Pac, I still, I didn't want him to write my songs. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, he was the big bro. He, and he had the vision. So he said, this sounds like something you should be saying. So I want you to do it. So that's how I got on that song. You know, I, done went, I went in there and did his lyrics, and it just fit the song, and we kept it, you know? Okay. And we didn't want to change it. I think even after Interscope wanted to, you know, go back and put the original songs on it, 
Uh, and But that's when everybody, the outlaws was like, no, Pac wanted Moo to do this specifically, and that's why he Moo was already on the song, so let's not change it. Okay. And going back to the Stella Rise album, um, a couple of questions on that one. Number one, can you tell me about uh, going in and doing new verses for the songs? Because this was obviously after the bootlegs hit. But also um, the yes. removal of Fatal. People always want to know um, what the logic and what the reasoning was for, for Fatal's verses being taken off. Fatal Versus got taken off because, um, you know, at the end, unfortunately, um, Pac wasn't really, you know, he loved Fatal, but it was some separation, you know what I mean? And um, I don't want to go into details because Fatal not here to defend himself. So Fatal kind of, you know, he went his separate ways before Pac passed away at the end, you know what I mean? After the New York, he never came back and things like that. So... He kind of went in separate ways, um, and um, so we decided, and I, if I'm not mistaken, I think even Pac wanted to remove him from some of the songs, you know what I mean? And I, I'm sure it would have worked itself out because we was all like family, even up until he passed away, but he never came back to L.A. He didn't want to sign the death row. He wanted to do a solo album, so we went and did our thing, and he did his thing, you know what I mean? 